The Indo-Parthian kingdom was ruled by the Gondophari dynasty and other rulers who were a group of ancient kings from Central Asia that ruled parts of present-day Afghanistan, Pakistan and northwestern India, during or slightly before the 1st century AD. For most of their history, the leading Gondophari kings held Taxila as their residence. But during their last few years of existence the capital shifted between Kabul and Peshawar. These kings have traditionally been referred to as Indo-Parthians, as their coinage was often inspired by the Arsasid dynasty. But they probably belonged to a wider groups of Iranian tribes who lived east of Parthia proper. And there is no evidence that all the kings who assumed the title Gondoferes, which means holder of glory, were even related. Gondoferes I and his successors. Gondoferes I originally seems to have been a ruler of Sistan in what is today eastern Iran, probably a vassal or relative of the Abrakarajas. Around 2010 BCE, he made conquests in the former Indo-Scythian kingdom, perhaps after the death of the important ruler Azas. Gondoferes became the ruler of areas comprising Arachosia, Sistan, Sindh, Punjab, and the Kabul Valley. But it does not seem as though he held territory beyond eastern Punjab. Gondoferes called himself King of Kings a Parthian title that in his case correctly reflects that the Indo-Parthian Empire was only a loose framework. A number of smaller dynasts certainly maintained their positions during the Indo-Parthian period, likely in exchange for their recognition of Gondoferes and his successors. These smaller dynasts included the Aprikarajas themselves, and Indo-Scythian subtraps such as Zionizers and Rajuvula, as well as anonymous Scythians who struck imitations of Aziz coins. The Kaharitash also held sway in Gujarat, perhaps just outside Gondifari's dominions. After the death of Gondifari I, the empire started to fragment. The name or title Gondiferes was adapted by Sarpedones, who became Gondiferes II and was possibly son of the first Gondiferes. Even though he claimed to be the main ruler, Sarpedones' rule was shaky and he issued a fragmented coinage in Sindh, eastern Punjab and Arachosia in southern Afghanistan. The most important successor was Abdagasis, Gondifari's nephew, who ruled in Punjab and possibly in the homeland of Sistan. After a short reign, Sarpedones seems to have been succeeded by Orthanes, who became Gondifari's the third Gadana. Orthanes ruled mostly in Sistan and Arachosia, with Abdagasis further east during the first decades AD, and was briefly succeeded by his son Abauzanes coin. After 20 AD, a king named Sases, a nephew of the Abrakaraja ruler Aspavarmath, took over Abdagasis territories and became Gondiferes IV Sases. According to Senior, this is the Gondiferes referred to in the Tacti Bai inscription. There were other minor kings. Sanabes was an ephemeral usurper in Sistan, who called himself Great King of Kings, and there was also a second Abdagasis coin, a ruler named Agata in Sint, another ruler called Satavastri coin, and an anonymous prince who claimed to be brother of the King Arsaces, in that case an actual member of the ruling dynasty in Parthia. But the Indo-Parthians never regained the position of Gondiferes I. And from the middle of the 1st century AD, the cushions under Kujula Kadphises began absorbing the northern Indian part of the kingdom. The last king Pakors only ruled in Sistan and Kandahar. Archaeology and Sources The city of Taxila is thought to have been a capital of the Indo-Parthians. Large strata were excavated by Sir John Marshall with a quantity of Parthian-style artifacts. The nearby temple of Jandial is usually interpreted as a Zoroastrian fire temple from the period of the Indo-Parthians. Some ancient writing described the presence of the Indo-Parthians in the area, such as the story of St. Thomas the Apostle.
who was recruited as a carpenter to serve at the court of King Gundafa in India. The Acts of Thomas describes in Chapter 17 Thomas' visit to King Gundafa in northern India. Chapters 2 and 3 depict him as embarking on a sea voyage to India, thus connecting Thomas to the west coast of India. As Senior points out, this Gundafa has usually been identified with the first Gondafaris who has thus been dated after the advent of Christianity, but there is no evidence for this assumption, and Senior's research shows that Gondoferes I could be dated even before 01 AD. If the account is even historical, Saint Thomas may have encountered one of the later kings who bore the same title. The Greek philosopher Apollonius of Tyana is related by Philostratus in Life of Apollonius Tyana to have visited India and specifically the city of Taxila around 46 CE. He describes constructions of the Greek type, probably referring to Sirkap, and explains that the Indo-Parthian king of Taxila, named Phraotes, received a Greek education at the court of his father and spoke Greek fluently. Tell me, O king, how you acquired such a command of the Greek tongue, and whence you derived all your philosophical attainments in this place. My father, after a Greek education, brought me to the sages at an age somewhat too early perhaps, for I was only twelve at the time. But they brought me up like their own son, for any that they admit knowing the Greek tongue they are especially fond of, because they consider that in virtue of the similarity of his disposition he already belongs to themselves. The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea is a surviving first-century guide to the routes commonly being used for navigating the Arabian Sea. It describes the presence of Parthian kings fighting with each other in the area of Sindh, a region traditionally known at that time as Scythia, due to the previous rule of the Indo-Scythians there. This river has seven mouths, very shallow and marshy, so that they are not navigable, except the one in the middle, at which by the shore, is the market town, Barbaricum. Before it there lies a small island, and inland behind it is the metropolis of Scythia, Minagara. It is subject to Parthian princes who are constantly driving each other out, Periplus of the Erythrian Sea. Chap 38 An inscription from Tacti Bai near Harda, disambiguation needed, bears two dates, one in the regnal year 26 of the Maharaja Guduvhara, and the year 103 of an unknown era. Religion of the Indo-Parthians to the contrary of the Indo-Greeks or Indo-Scythians. There are no explicit records of Indo-Parthian rulers supporting Buddhism, such as religious dedications, inscriptions, or even legendary accounts. Also, although Indo-Parthian coins generally closely follow Greek numismatics, they never display the Buddhist triratna symbol, nor do they ever use depictions of the elephant or the bull, possible religious symbols which were profusely used by their predecessors. They are thought to have retained Zoroastrianism, being of Iranian extraction themselves. This Iranian mythological system was inherited from them by the later Kurshans who ruled from the Peshawar Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan. Representation of Indo-Parthian devotees on the coins and in the art of Gandhara. Indo-Parthians are depicted with short crossover jackets and large baggy trousers, possibly supplemented by chap-like over trousers. Their jackets are adorned with rows of decorative rings or medals. Their hair is usually bushy and contained with a headband, a practice largely adopted by the Parthians from the 1st century CE. Individuals in Indo-Parthian attire are sometimes shown as actors in Buddhist devotional scenes. It is usually considered that most of the excavations that were done at Sirkap near Taxila by John Marshall relate to Indo-Parthian layers although more recent scholarship sometimes relates them to the Indo-Greeks instead. These archaeological researchers provided a quantity of Hellenistic artifacts combined with elements of Buddhist worship. Some other temples, such as nearby Jandil may have been used as a Zoroastrian fire temple. 
Buddhist sculptures The statues found at Sirkap in the late Scythian to Parthian level suggest an already developed state of Gandharan art of the time or even before Parthian rule. A multiplicity of statues, ranging from Hellenistic gods to various Gandharan lay devotees, are combined with what are thought as some of the early representations of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas. Today, it is still unclear when the Greco-Buddhist art of Gandhara exactly emerged, but the findings in Sirkap do indicate that this art was already highly developed before the advent of the cushions. Stone palettes Numerous stone palettes found in Gandhara are considered as good representatives of Indo-Parthian art. These palettes combine Greek and Persian influences together with a frontality in representations which is considered as characteristic of Parthian art. Such palettes have only been found in archaeological layers corresponding to Indo-Greek, Indo-Scythian and Indo-Parthian rule, and are essentially unknown the preceding Marian layers or the succeeding Kushan layers. Very often these palettes represent people in Greek dress in mythological scenes, but a few of them represent people in Parthian dress. A palette from the Napestek Museum in Prague shows an Indo-Parthian king seated cross-legged on a large sofa, surrounded by two attendants also in Parthian dress. They are shown drinking and serving wine. Indo-Parthian manhunting. Indo-Parthian revelers. Indo-Parthian couple. Devotees at Zoroastrian Fire Altar, Silk Road Transmission of Buddhism Some pocket of Parthian rule remained in the East, even after the takeover by the Sassanids in 226. From the 2nd century several Central Asian Buddhist missionaries became in the Chinese capital cities of Luoyang and sometimes Nanjing, where they particularly distinguished themselves by their translation work. The first known translators of Buddhist texts into Chinese are actually Parthian missionaries, distinguished in Chinese by their Parthian surname, and for Anshi, country of the Arsacids. Anshi Kao was a Parthian prince, who made the first known translations of Hinayana Buddhist texts into Chinese, and Hsuan was a Parthian merchant who became a monk in China 181 AD. Tanti, a Parthian monk, and Fahin, a monk of Parthian origins. South Indian legacy. There are some claims based on historical, anthropological, and linguistic evidence indicating that the southern Indian states of the Pallavas was originally founded by the Parthians, either from Iran or from the territories of the Indo-Parthians in northwestern India, also called Pallavas in Indian literature. This region is called Pal Nadu or Palavanadu even today. Pallavas later extended their sway up to northern Tamil region and established a flourishing empire. Main Indo-Parthian rulers Gondiferis the first coin Gondiferis the second Sarpedon's coin Abdagasas the first coin Gondiferis the third Gadana previously Orthanes Gondiferis the fourth Sases previously Sases Pakor's coin